Hey guys, today I'm gonna to be sharing with you three tips that you need to know before opening up a restaurant. Or if you already have a restaurant, these three tips will bring your restaurant to the next level. My name is Wilson, and today we're gonna to be going over three steps and three tips that you would need to know before opening up a restaurant. These are tips that you would want to avoid, and these are things that you would wanna know beforehand. Or let's say if you're opening and operating a restaurant already, it is nice to review these steps and ensure that you have act, actually optimized and capitalized on every chance for you to bring your restaurant to the next level. Make sure you guys stay till the end to receive your special gift. These are the documents that I've personally used to grow my ice cream chain into an international brand. Um, yeah, so make sure you guys stay till the end. That's a special gift for you. If you guys have any questions, comments, make sure you guys drop them below and I'll make sure that I reply to them. The three things you need to know before opening up your restaurant. Number one, know your numbers. Now I know math is not your forte, nor is it my forte, but did you know that more than 80% of the restaurant owners fail to succeed because they do not know their numbers? The way to tell whether your business is healthy is by the numbers. A simple tweak here and there would determine whether you have the uh, like opportunity to bring your family to Bora Bora on the beach, or will you need to be working through the holidays because you can't find anyone to help you out? It is all in the numbers. Personal story of mine is that four years ago, I was audited by the um, CRA, the tax uh, revenue agency, and they were accusing me of owing them more than $200,000. We fought back and forth because I didn't have the proper bookkeeping, I didn't have the proper receipts, and every single moment that they had a chance to ding me, they ding me on. So at the end of the day, I paid hundreds of thousands of dollars back to the revenue agencies for something that I've not committed of. And it's just, it sucks, right? You make all these money and you want to keep it in your pocket. But because of these poor practices of mine, I had to pay a really hefty fee. So please, please, please do not make this mistake. Don't make them any richer than they already are. Now on a positive note, because of me spending a lot more time understanding my numbers, now I was able to go from $200,000 in debt with the, with the tax agencies to now we've grown our, our brand internationally, all because of me spending a little bit more time on the dry stuff, knowing my numbers. Now, for the sake of simplicity, I'm gonna go over three main categories of expenses that you need to keep an eye out for and their average um, percentage that it should be taking from your business. I know there's gonna be a lot of subcategories. I know there's gonna be a lot of different expenses for you accounting nerds out there. Please don't call me out and ambush me in the comments. I'm just going over the really, really big picture. So for the people like us that, that we don't really know about these things, this is like the pe best and perfect place to start. The three numbers to aim for, okay? One, the rental cost. Make sure that you keep your rental costs as low as possible, okay? So many people fail to do this because they enter into a lease agreement that is not in their favor. They're overly optimistic about what they can perform. And as a result of that, the rental costs is much higher than they can afford. So it doesn't matter how much money they bring in, they're still gonna be at a loss. So make sure you pay attention to your rental costs. As an example, one exercise that you can do is go to your competitor's restaurant. Look at what people are ordering on average, okay? If people are ordering a $15 meal and they order a drink, average ticket price around $20. Now you're gonna click and you're gonna calculate how many people are actually consuming on a daily basis. Go there for three days, sit there, try to, try to adjust and forecast how many people are actually ordering. By the end of the day and the end of the three days, you would have a rough estimate of how many people are walking through the doors and the average ticket price of let's say $20. Some people will be ordering wine, other would be ordering pop, others would be ordering appetizer. But at the end of the day, we're looking for the average ticket price. And with that average ticket price of let's say $20, 100 people go through the doors. That's gonna be 
$2,000 that you're looking at in terms of revenue. Now times that by let's say 25 operating days, then that comes up to be $50,000. What that means and that translates into is you should account for no more than 15% of rent, which is $7,500 as rent for this specific location. Once again, aim for 15% for rental cost. Now this is only a forecast. They're, they have Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays, doesn't matter. Average it out. There are good months, bad months, average it out. Use your best discretion, okay? So this is something just to aim for. Um, it's not something that's gonna, uh, it's not a do or die thing, but at the end of the day, I wanna give you a reference number so you know whether you are on the right track or not. 15% is what you should be aiming for. The second cost that you should be looking into is the food cost. This cost is basically everything that goes into producing the meal that you're making, whether it be the ingredient cost, whether it be the person that is, the cooks that are preparing the food, to the utensils, to um, let's say if it's a takeout box, then the takeout box as well. Anything that it goes into producing the food is uh, supposedly and calculated as a food cost. And as a rule of thumb, you do not want to go and exceed 35%, okay? So you should be aiming for 30% for your food cost. The third cost to look into is labor costs. This should include anywhere from your servers to your managers to the operators. So many businesses that are I've mentored, they make the mistake of not including their own labor costs into the math. And at the end of the day, they're looking at their, their, their P&L. They're like, wow, I'm making like so much money because at the end of the day, they're not putting in the time that they've been spent operating the restaurant. So make sure that you as an operator, you put your costs into the calculations as well. So with labor costs, you try your very best to aim for 30% as well. So all in all, if you put all these three big costs together, you should be aiming for no more than 75%, which leaves you around 25% that goes into utilities, that goes into um, management, that goes into your own profit margins, okay? So the better you can control your food costs and the better that you can control your labor costs, the better margins you have and the more money you can take home from that. If you can run these numbers and to hit these goals, then you are golden. You can afford to bring your family to Bora Bora, be on the beach drinking pina coladas with them because these numbers would allow you to have a very healthy margins. If you were to hire a manager or an operator to be in place of you, then give these as your own KPIs for them. These are the key metrics where you're managing their performance, okay? The food cost, and the labor cost is something that you can use as a parameter for them to manage their performance. There's so many ways where they can aim and they, they can utilize strategies to lower these different percentages, whether it be spoilage, whether it be theft, um, staggering schedules, um, um, bonuses. There's a lot of different ways to incentivize their, their staff to bring up the sales while decreasing the labor and the food costs as well, okay? So if you guys have any more questions, make sure you guys drop in the comments below, whether it be lowering your spoilages or different ways to schedule your staff, you can leave them in the comments below. Number two, know yourself. Imagine this, close your eyes. You're lying on the beach of Bora Bora. You're embracing all the sun rays, embracing the quality of time spent with your loved ones, and you're filled with gratitude and love. And the best part is that you knowing on the other side of the country, you, there's someone that is competent, that, is, that has common sense, that really cares about your business, taking care of your business for you and delivering the results and the great customer service and quality products that you, you set out, that you've envisioned and empowered them to do so. The best thing is that this whole trip is paid for by this automated cash cow that you have built yourself. How amazing does that sound? This is all possible when you know yourself. Now let me explain 
you see the experience that you want to deliver to your customers. You see the vision and you see the candid smiles of them enjoying your meal. You see how this whole restaurant or cafe should look like. And the feeling when someone walks in to your joint, you'd be like, oh, this is freaking amazing. You see this and you have a vision to deliver for your customers. And this is your gift. If you want people who are great, that have common sense, that are competent, that is passionate to care about your business, to be able to handle this and execute on your behalf, then you've got to communicate this vision of yours into them. Give them the parameters and the tools to execute on your behalf. This is what sets people who are working in their business nine to nine every single day with no holidays, apart from the people who are actually can travel and to spend quality time with their loved ones and their family. This is the biggest differentiator by knowing yourself and being able to translate that to your team. So many people I know and clients that I have are complaining about the fact that they cannot hire great help. And that is something that I feel totally against because I feel like it's your responsibility to be able to translate your vision with a purpose to the people that are out there to help you. This is what creates good culture. It is the ability to, to, to translate this vision to them. Let them see what you see. And when you can do that, that's when they can deliver on your vision. That's when they're rowing all in sync. That's when you can go travel and have someone else take care of your business. And that's when what real business is about. You know, the perks of having a business is the fact that you can control your time, not having your business control you. So many business owners out there, especially people in restaurant business, have are falling into the curse of this, is that they need to be in their business 24 seven because whether it be people stealing from them, whether it be quality control, whether it be customer service, whether it be machine malfunctioning, so many things happening all at once. And it's so difficult to find great help, great talent, great chef, great managers, all these types of things is because of the fact that they're not well informed. The number one thing that you can do is to know yourself, know your visions, know your values and communicate that with your team when you are able to successfully do that, that's what becomes super, super powerful. If you want to know more about this, or if this is of any interest to you, make sure you drop a comment below and I can explain further about how do you create this culture? How do you create this movement and to communicate this with your team? Number three, know your customers. So many restaurant owners and cafe owners are falling into the trap of this. The biggest blind spot is the inability to connect with their customers. As restaurant owners and cafe owners, we all have a specific vision in mind that we wanna deliver, yet we fail to hear what our customers are wanting. We fail to connect with them. We fail to show them, hey, this is my world. This is the picture that I wanna draw. And we fail to connect with our customer on a personal level. Your customers are coming through the doors for a very, very specific reason. Whether your restaurant being a high-end restaurant, which is a place to wine and dine your other loved ones, or is it a fast food joint, which people are coming in to grab and go for their lunch rushes, you need to very, very uh, much understand what and who you're catering your services to. It doesn't make sense to have a to-go product and a to-go menu, something that's grab it a quick and go, if you're trying to cater to people who are um, wanting to have a dining experience, a dining experience where they can come and celebrate their milestones or to bring their loved ones, to impress them, to wine and dine them. If your product and what you're serving does not align with the people that you attract, then there's a misalignment. And it is this misalignment that causes people not to come back and to be a repeat customer. So your number one thing that you need to do when connecting with your customers is to know your customers, to know your customer demographic. Why are they coming in through the doors? What is it that they value? What is it that they don't value? What is it that they hate? When is it that they come in the, the, the most often? When are the peak hours? know your customers so well that when you're talking to them, they feel like there, there's a connection with them. That's when you know that you have a successful business is the ability 
to connect with your customers. Give them what they need and give them what they value and they'll always come back for more. It's the experience that they're looking for and if you can do that, then you don't need no gimmicks. You don't need no marketing tactics that's gonna pull in people just one time. You're gonna have a loyal customer for life, okay? It's as simple as this, just give them what they want. Okay guys, we've identified three simple things to know to increase your chances of running a successful restaurant or to tweak your restaurant so then it's even more successful. And those three steps are to know your numbers, know yourself, and to know your customers. Please, please, please do not make the mistakes of ignoring these three basic principles. I mean, as simple as it sounds, these are the things that's gonna determine whether you are on the beach in Bora Bora or you're gonna be hustling nine to nine every single day being a slave of the restaurant, okay? I've been sharing these things with you because I do not want you to be like so many, 90% of the cus or the restaurant owners out there who are suffering and being in the rat race, okay? I really want you to be on that beach in Bora Bora with your loved ones, okay? And as promised, my gift for you is that I've prepared for you in the link below all the documents that I've personally used to grow my ice cream business um, and that allows me to travel the world when I have some amazing talent to take care of my business for, for me. So these are the templates that I've used. Um, make sure you guys click on the link below to download it. Um, there's no gimmicks, no nothing. It's my gift for you, okay? Make sure that these tools are for you and it's only powerful if you utilize it, if you use it to your advantage. So make sure you guys spend the time to execute and to actually go through the, the, the training and, and the modules because it has definitely given me a lot of results. Once again, if you do not put it in the work, it would never work for you. This is gonna be a crazy journey. There's gonna be ups, there's gonna be downs. I know it's gonna be very, very difficult, but I'm committed to being in this journey with you. I'm gonna be shooting a lot more videos to show you basically what I've done in order for me to be able to see the success that I'm seeing right now. And hopefully it would help one or, or two of you guys to achieve your own results so you can bring your family to Bora Bora. It's something that I'm committed in doing. All we have to do is take action. Make sure you download the documents, the templates, and use it to your own advantage, okay? If you appreciate this video, please show me some love. Hit the like button. Make sure you guys subscribe for more videos on how we can actually make your restaurant much more profitable, much more successful. Um, follow along the journey. Leave me a comment of anything or any questions that you have in the future. 